Welcome to Present Poetry. I'm your host, Erin Crittenden, and all poems within this podcast are either public domain or are used with permission from the author or the author's estate. It's a fun time for poetry lovers of all ages, so sit back, relax, and get ready to hear some poems of the past and the present. This week's featured poet is Prince Views. Born in Johannesburg, South Africa, and raised in the slums of Writer's Block, Prince Views' poetry is basically a purging of intense emotions and, at times, written introspection. However, he is no stranger to having his poetry read on the air, and you can find some of his audio versions on Ditto through the link in the show notes. This poem is called Butterflies and Goosebumps. Yesterday was many years unlived. I spent too introverted in mental plagues and fast pleasures. Little did I feel the summer breeze, and yet it blew through my clothes, as did many coffees down my throat and ticks of clocks through my heartbeats. I may have kissed and forgot, treated hugs pettily. I would love now to adore presently love and effect and all within the context, less in my mind and more of my eyes on you, nose breathing in every cloud of coffee beans, ears at every utterance of your mind and heart, and my fingers sensing every inch that yours covered over mine at every time you held my hand. I've been at war for a while now, wailing and waving white flag, wading through white deserts, wasting away gradually, craving a truce to allow space for a warm heart. I've conditioned self to cope with the cold, comforting sores with coals, and brazen conduct to the loss of self. My descent to the present is recent, that it's just now I sensed an incense that has always been in my atmosphere. I am after a confrontation with my fears, and tears tended to compassionately. It's as though I have to solve through the current state of affairs to have more than just a fleeting feeling. It's not into love that I fell, at first sight or over a coffee table, only just curiosity, all encounters with you, accounting for an image of you. Though you've bridged through my threshold of attraction, stuck at an extent that maybe time will extend and prove me false, that I did factually skip a pulse when you held my hand. This poem is called Coffee Went Cold. Hey, Sarah. I hid the TV remote inside the pillow on the big couch. The air conditioner's remote is inside the kitchen island's drawer. I left your favorite pancakes in the fridge. Your coffee might be cold by the time you wake up from your deathbed. Fortunately, I got the microwave fixed. I had cried out some love letters for you, so you've got a lot of reading to do. I couldn't throw them in your coffin, so I put them in the spare room's top shelf, right next to your medicine, so you won't miss them. It felt a little weird walking alone from church, but I've gotten used to it. I don't know if I'm forgetting something. Oh, you should see your sister. She misses you a lot. See you soon. Bye. This poem is called Self-Aware, Part 1. This is where a fed self-awareness finds me, in the body of a black man in his twenties, perplexed by fluctuations of his own ego, and more. He is an effect I have learned to have compassion for, sold by flashy possibilities of supposed free will, buried deep in the philosophy genre at a young age. Manifesting parental love would have gifted us a further head start than one born in a merely rich family. Perhaps the neutrality to be as I please, as I need to be. Clear sight is imperative to our survival. He could, for a resolution, leave for a cup of coffee to never return, and instill traumas in our wife and kids by mere abandonment, as a conditioned response to responsibility. 
but we are two here in this body, and I am curious about our grandparents, and also the family dysfunctions perceived as norms. The silical lethal diseases, failed marriages, and the sort they blamed witches for. Clear sight is crucial to my survival, because now a wildfire threatens my home. This poem is called Baby Steps. These notes feel repeated. Love poems and prose I posed on pages, hoping to scribble a sage, earn a wage, and deal with the rage bottled from days of lunchboxes and curfews on nights pungent with aromas of recipes for disasters. Where a fear of death plagued my heart's rhythm by those who handed me the gift of life, perplexed by an inferiority complex, while in an already puzzling maze, survival alone wasn't sufficient for life's preservation. Twenty-four and still crawling on all fours, tracing a trail of leaking bottle of milk and tracking causes of whelming effects I despise in self. This poem is titled, Frown for the Camera. Warm was the home as one soul began cremating, cozy and comfy in the living room as the lifeless grew cold and infectious in the bedroom, while dining and settled in the jacuzzi as boiling frog, her lifetime started becoming a broken clock. Choked by the discomfort of a guilty conscience, I rent south, materializing as an altruistic to acts of kindness for my own benefit. The last of my concern will be whether or not the hand-me-downs are a perfect fit for the stormy weather. I just want to feed Africa to adorn my Twitter feed. I'm a walking gas to flame, treading past patiently tended crops of the lower class. I am an unapologetic misstep onto the throats of those crying for help. The cameras aren't really here for awareness, or for the world's public image of a better tomorrow. So kindergartners could sow seeds of faith on mankind. Don't paint me as a saint. I do it for the gram. Introspectively self-deprecating to exhaust any egocentric motive, so to move purely altruistic for the sake of love, the procedure is delicate, and I care enough not to inflict more fire, but to extinguish the flames that have burned right under your nose, behind your closed windows. The smoke is mirrored to be clouding the outside, and yet it claims the indoor atmosphere. It is a mile away from your own home. You should seek shelter a place of truce where I can share my truth with you, so you can fairly choose, red or blue, to learn and accept what is true or stay supposedly blissful in ignorance. Outro. Hot and debris was the home after it all. I care enough to have prayed as much that you made it out alive. Thank you for listening to this episode of Present Poetry. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review, share us on social media, or subscribe so you never miss an episode. If you would like to learn more about the featured poet, or you would like your work featured on the podcast, please check out the links in the show notes. Thank you again for listening, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye-bye!